final from the Circus Tavern. Brilliant. Double eight. Here he goes. Got to compose himself. Yes. yes. Don't move. This could Get well on. turn out to be an epic. Great first start. Got to go for the treble 18 and the ball with Painter on a free dart finish here. Bullseye here for a 164. The power and the glory. Single 10. Double 16 for Painter. Possibly the biggest start of his life so far. So Taylor is fighting with one foot in an alligator's mouth. Possibilities, possibilities here from 144. Double 12, now this would be... Oh! Look out, folks! They have been palpitated in the pottery by Sedic! Sensational saga of sharp shooting. All the way, folks! Sit back and hold on to something very secure. If Painter could get this one two six, needs to treble 19 to leave the treble ball. 19. Ball for a totally level game. This for the leg. He wants the bullseye. Outrageous. You would credit it. This is possibly the most momentous leg we've ever seen in World Darts. Boy, the eleven world title. Two fives to become world champ again. Yeah. Gracious in defeat, the power is once again champion of the world! It's a night that still plays on the mind of Kevin Payne. We must run those moments through time and time again, if only. Yeah, if only. They're big words, aren't they? Um, you know, that last leg, I know what he's going through, you know, you just think, just give me a 12 dart leg, you know, to, to win this in the World Championship. It would have a completely different life for him. But what he's got to do, he's got to look back and go, well, I took Phil Taylor at the last leg, which not many people do. But that, that night, Kev had a, an arrogance about him, you know, that air of, yeah, I'm here, I've, I've, I deserve to be here. And he, he took 100 out there, 22 double tops. That's how he's got to walk on that stage, that, that bit of arrogance that, yeah, I'm here, I deserve to be here. Does he have that swagger about him at this tournament? No, not at all. He hasn't had it for a little while. I think he's, he's come up against Phil so many times on TV, on the big stage, and he's, he's been battered a few times, so it kind of gets knocked out of you. But there's, there's a time when you've got to say, right, the history is history. It doesn't matter what I've done. I start a new chapter and let's go on. Tonight, if he has a real good run at Phil, a different person comes out of it. Last time he played in we, we saw him at the UK Open, Kevin Painter was whitewashed. Phil Taylor got 118.66 average. Will that play on Kevin's mind? I don't think so. I think Kevin kind of looked at it as if Phil played the best game of his life there, which he did, you know, breaking the world record. He still should have won one or two legs, you know, I, I felt. But um, I think Kevin has, has turned, turned the corner, I think. He's forgot about that. He's now, he, you know, when I talked to him earlier on, he looked pretty casual. He looked like, I'm going to get up there. I know I'm playing Phil. If I beat him, it will be a great feat. But I'm going to go up there and I'm going to try my hardest. Phil Taylor always tries his hardest. Could it be another record-breaking night for, for the power? Yeah, I mean, every time Phil walks on that stage, he wants to break records on 180s, you know, he wants to do nine darters, he wants the highest average, highest percentage on doubles. And uh, Phil, you know, really is a true true professional in, in the way he's, his attitude towards improving himself all the time. Well, Rod Sill has been talking to uh, Kevin Painter, who's in uh, uncharted territory here at the match play. When you come to a tournament, if you're a decent player, you expect to do well. Um, only to have made the second round is, you know, <laughs> obviously I'm disappointed with that. But, um, you know, sometimes you, different tournaments you play well in. I, I tend to do very well at World Championships. Um, some events don't seem to do very well. Obviously this week has turned around a bit. Hopefully play well tonight against Phil Taylor. Just, I mean... You do seem to draw him a lot. I think, I think you must have played him more times than anyone. I think you've played him 24 times. I mean, that, that must be a record, I should think. I mean, are you getting to the, be the sick of the sight of him? Well, yeah, yeah I, I'm getting sick of the sight of him. I don't know if he's getting sick of the sight of me because uh, he's been winning most of them. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, when we both walk on the stage, you know, I've just got to play as well as I can. You know, I'm not silly enough to sit here and tell you I'm going to beat him. Um, obviously, I'm going to do my best and hope Phil has an off day because if Phil plays his very best game, 
that's better than anyone else's. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I'm going I'm to go out there and smash him up because uh, he hears stuff like that and does it even better. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, talking of his very best game, the, the last time you played him at the UK, it literally was the very best game full stop when he averaged the world record. Um, yeah. and, 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 you know, you never got a shot at a double. Now, I mean, that's, that's unheard of for a player of your class and quality yeah. not to get a shot at a double, isn't it? No, I mean, that was a combination of two things why I didn't get a shot at a double. One, Phil was very good, and two, uh, I was pretty poor. Um, that day, probably my worst TV performance. Um, so obviously, I'm hoping <laughs> that sort of thing don't happen tonight. You know, when you're playing Phil, sometimes it don't look like he's playing particularly well. And then he walks off stage with 115 odd average, and you think, what happened there? You know, but um, yeah, Phil, he just makes the game look easy, doesn't he? He's doing 11 darters like they're going out of fashion. You know, and, uh, <laughs> you just got to get on with it. It's not worth looking at it because it demoralises you. You might as well just get your head down and get on with your own game. When Phil starts, you know, gets a good lead on you, he just pulls away. If you can stay with him and put him under a bit of pressure, you know, then you've got half a chance. But it's all about that, it's all about keeping with him, especially early on. If he gets away, that's your lot, you know. Yeah, so a fast start is absolutely essential. Yeah, I think it's vital, yeah. yeah. You run in this tournament's taking you back into the top 16, so, I mean, there's a, an incentive there to keep on going and shift yourself up even further into that top echelon. Yeah, you know, I'd, I believe I'm a top 16 player anyway. In fact, I believe I should be in the top eight. Um, and if I probably, if it wasn't for playing field so many times, I probably would be up there. Um, but I should be in the top 16. You know, I'm disappointed to have dropped out of that. But with the way our ranking system works now, when you get the likes of players coming in, their first two years got no money to defend. Mm. They're going to, if they're decent players, they're going to come along and and catch players up. And obviously, you've got the likes of Gary Anderson and uh, Simon Whitlock that have done that. Um, so it was inevitable they were going to catch eventually. Um, it's just important that I, I stay in touch and, and keep in the top 16. Kevin Painter against Phil Taylor up next. Already through to the semi-final. James Wade, Raymond Van Barneveld and Simon Willock. It looks like the dream semi-final lineup. Can that man gatecrash the party? Our MC is John McDonald. Ladies oh, and Gentlemen, welcome back to the action here in the seaside town of Blackpool. It's the SlamJames.com World Match Play quarterfinals brought to you by the Professional Darts Corporation. We are live on Sky Sports HD. Time to meet the quarterfinalists. Time to meet the former world finalist, simply known as the artist Kevin Painter.
he's got his 3D specs on a day early, the power. Um, Rob, the last time we saw him looking as relaxed as that, we all know what happened. Yeah, he threw two nine darters and missed the third one in the final of the uh, Premier League at Wembley. And, uh, you know, he does look ultra relaxed, I have to say. I mean, he's just got this air about him, Taylor, you know, where he's so confident in his own ability that it, it just gets him to the standard he is. Um, the crowd so behind Phil Taylor. How difficult is that when you're a, the, playing, you know, in the other half and you, you're, you're Kevin Painter and you've got the crowd in your back like that? Well, Kevin knows that's going to happen, so he's got to get on with it. You know, it, perhaps in the first couple of legs or just on the walk-up, it might uh, affect him a little bit. But Kevin's been up there enough times. He, he's had the crowd against him and he's been playing Phil Taylor on 24 times. So, uh, you know, he knows what that's like. He just knows he's got to throw his own darts. 40 to 1 on with the bookmakers, Phil Taylor. Something just uh, catching his eye in the crowd there. But what a lineup it would be. I mentioned it. James Wade, Raymond Van Barneveld, Simon Willock, and perhaps Phil Taylor. The dream lineup, the best semi final lineup there's been. Yeah, certainly ever at the World Match Player here at Blackpool, Dave. There's no question about that. I mean, Kevin has got to get out of the block quick. Uh, if he's going to get anything out of this game. Let's hope it's a competitive, decent match. He takes a big breath, gets his focus, ready to play the greatest player that has ever been. Your commentary team, Stuart Pike and John Gwynn. Yeah, the greatest player there's ever been, and what a spectacle, the walk-on. <laughs> he loves it in Blackpool. We all love it in Blackpool. Kevin Painter, the man who up to now hasn't always been in love with Blackpool in the sense that he's never done very well on that stage, but he's in the quarters tonight. Who's going to win? Is it going to be Phil Taylor? Yes, say most. Can Painter cause a shock, Stuart? Well, ultra relaxed, ultra chilled Phil Taylor. In control of the opening leg straight away. Yes, Painter in the quarterfinals here at Blackpool for the first time at the tenth attempt. Kevin Painter. It'll just be interesting to see how this game develops. There's the Painter clan. Never been too much love lost between a Mr. Taylor and Mr. Painter over the years. Always a little bit of needle under the surface. And always a little bit of treble bashing from Taylor. Didn't take long, did it? Second visit, first maximum. Taylor in control in the opening leg. 59. Yeah, and that's Bristol, three out of three so far, he's... Or is that the lot? No, he was... He, he lost out on Barney, didn't he? But three out of four's not bad, really. For a, an amateur tipster, you know, Stuart. So, first 180 to Taylor, and... Uh, Kevin, yes, there has been a history between them, and uh, I think it was a year or two after that particular final at Purfleet. Uh, 140. Well, Anastasia, uh, who was desperately hoping to be involved in the final of the Women's World Championship. As we look at double 16 here for the opening leg. Yeah, no problem. 12 darts against the throw. A maximum thrown in. There's Anastasia and her husband, Tony Martin, who plays on the PDC circuit as well. It's that ladies' final Saturday night. Stacey Bromberg of America against England's Tricia Wright. Anastasia missing out in the final qualifier to get to Blackpool. But we will see a lot more of Anastasia over the years, I am sure. But what a marker Phil Taylor has just put down, John. Yes, a brilliant 12 data, one that uh, Anastasia Dobromyslova would be absolutely proud of. And uh, good to see her here. Uh, Thank you. Nice to have a chat with Trish Wright as well in the players' room there. Not seen her for a good while. Good player. Good lady players here, but at the moment, two top men. 9-0. Taylor whitewashing Painter at the UK Open. Last month. Average of 118.66. World record average for a TV major. He's already got the best ever average in Blackpool Nine. history earlier this week. Just shy of 115. Is he a man on a mission as he chases that 11th world match play title? And there'll be no sentiment here, you know. If Taylor can win it, 16-0, 61, 62, he will. 
Painter has to strike, though. He has to get into this game, and quickly. Oh, yes. Really couldn't afford to lose the first leg against the uh, with throw. But uh, there's a long way to go. But if Taylor gets in front, he seems to get better. Just listen to this run of uh, legs, uh, Stuart. Uh, Taylor, 134. While Painter's throwing, I'll That's just nip through the ten legs that Taylor threw against Barry Bates. 11, 12, 13, 13, 13, 15, 11, 11, 11, 13. That's not bad, is it? It's not bad, is not it? Bad. Well, for 2 0. Pops for Taylor. 36. Well, a chance here for Painter. These are the chances that Taylor's going to leave. Tub plus finishes. And believe me, these are the chances Painter has to take. And he's going to get a dart, at least at tops, to break back. What a confidence boost this would be. 96. Yeah, it's a pity he was hitting those with great regularity against uh, Mark Walsh. Really, especially towards the end of that match and as crunch Jackson time came, and now Painter, Taylor. having missed tops, sees Taylor hit the Robert. tops. Admittedly, Taylor. that was his second go, and 2-0 uh, to the power. But isn't it just a template of games 95. we've seen so many times in the past when Taylor uh, is playing in, in, in major TV events, when he makes a good start, his opponent gets a... A chance, but it's a ton plus chance. He has one dart, as Painter did. He misses. 60. Next dart, Taylor doesn't. How many times has that happened? I wonder. Oh yes. Many, many, John. Well, the first really top player to draw our attention to it. Not that we weren't aware of it, but he drew everybody's attention to it and made us more aware, if you like, with Shane Burgess. He said, "You've got to be taking out." One four sixes, one three eights, one two sixes, and so on against Taylor because that's he outscores you so much. And there's another example his uh, second 180. His average, uh, even so early in this contest, is worth mentioning 109.6. 95, sorry. Yeah, 95, it is well done, Bruce. Well, he did apologise. <laughs> yeah, one of the best in the business, Bruce nice. Spenley. Been around for many, many years, and we have some top referees in the PDC, don't we? But the players here, all trying to beat Phil Taylor. Doesn't happen very often, and... 40 to warm on before a dart was thrown. But a chance here for Painter. Certainly a chance for Kevin Painter to... Get a leg on the board. Well, bad first start, but no problem with the Kevin other two. Now, Painter, on his own throw, has got to take out 90. Another one of those, all the treble. Now then, bullseye, this will be a belter. Oh, yes! yes. Oh, and Painter's got a paint by the boot. They've got to be big like that. Yep. Right in the middle of the red bit. May I suggest also a huge sigh of relief. 9 0, he lost to Taylor in Bolton. He'd lost the first Eight. two here at a canter. He's got a leg on the ball. 2 1. But Taylor with a break in the very first leg of the match. Yeah, that 9 0 represented a perfect average because, of course, Taylor uh, won every leg uh, and therefore nine doubles. Uh, in fact, Stuart, I did a little bit of uh, research afterwards and he watched another 180 go in. Not quite. I uh, did a bit of research after. He threw 114 arrows in those nine legs. Uh, had he thrown two arrows fewer, 112, he'd have broken the 120 barrier. I think that's got to be his aim. Yeah. That's got to be the target, I think. I'm sure it is. You know, he hit the two nine darters at Wembley. He always wants to set targets. 96. The next target will be three nine darters. The next target will be 120 average on television. And he'll be looking to do that this week here in Blackpool. 60. 
Yeah. Yeah. But take, uh, Painter, where we are, fourth leg, 93 average, respectable. Taylor, 109 and a half. Better than respectable. 96. Well, for what it's worth, Painter, 88.9 in his first uh, round beating of Colin Lloyd. Came from 8-2 down, remember? And then 91.75 against Mark Wall. So he's improving. It's, if, he, if he maintains this, it'll be considered improvement. Whereas Taylor, 114, just short of 115. And then uh, double 16. Yeah, gives him another leg. 3-1 to the there. power. But he dropped from 115 down to 104.6, and I'd be facetious when I say that, I know. Uh, both efforts quite brilliant. Yeah, good dance from Kevin Poulter. I, I just get the feeling here that we all know he's a very intense character, uh, Kevin Poulter. Lovely lad. Good to chat to. Loves his darts, very passionate about it, but I just think tonight he's just got to try and enjoy it, try and have some fun. There is no pressure on him. Just go out there and, and throw... 140! ..what you throw against any other opponent. And he's doing well in this leg. He but is, and uh, playing the board is, is the best thing to try and do, uh, even though the referees consistently call in 180s and 11 darts play the board, enjoy it as you say, and you never know. I thought we saw the best of Painter latterly against Mark Walsh when he got down to nitty gritty time. He really did put it together. He has a fair point, though. He, you know, he's a top 16 player. 41. And if, if things have been different, no one has played Taylor Moore in TV tournaments. 24 times Taylor's won 23, and that's bound to affect, uh, affect Kevin Painter's standing, but almost irrelevant now, isn't it? That Absolutely. Vic that, that victory from Painter over Taylor at the World Grand Prix, I mean, it, it matters nothing. 85. It happened, it's history, and he's lost 20 odd times to Taylor since. Yes, it'll be nine years ago, come October. How time flies. Ten years ago, Taylor played Alan Warren in the final here. And I remember sitting with Sid and uh, the first 15 legs of the match. Both Taylor led 10-5 at the stage, at the break. And there wasn't a leg over 15 hours. Uh, 15 or under. Whether it be the 10 of Taylor or the 5 of Warren. It was brilliant, absolutely fantastic. A double break on the cards here. Maybe for Taylor. So, double six. Oh, yeah, lethal. That is a Let's real, go. real body blow for Kevin Painter early on in this quarter final. Massive dart. But Taylor knows when to hurt an opponent. He's just hurt Kevin Painter. Taylor leads in the quarter final. Yeah, quarterfinals night, we've had a fabulous day, and Stompy gave Van Barnevelt a real good game there. The two Dutchmen turned on a treat. Barney admits he wasn't his brilliant best, but did enough. And Taylor, well, he's averaging 107 in this match, enough to put him 4-1 up against the artist, 94 his average. And, uh, well, if Taylor wins, he plays Whitlock. Who beat Ella Klassen this afternoon? Raymond. And Raymond van Barneveld 
the other winner this evening meets James Way tomorrow. And judging by that interview with Dave Clark, definitely a match not to miss that yeah. one. Basically, bring it on, Barney was saying. Yeah, Barney in his first semi final at Blackpool after three consecutive quarter final defeats. Barney Nancy. against Wade. At the start of the tournament, connoisseurs would have said, Dave Clark used the phrase dream semi finals. Barney Wade, Taylor against maybe Whitlock or Anderson. Uh, Taylor at the moment looking for another one. But he's punishing Painter here. 108 Taylor, 94 average Painter. Needled by the fact that that last one didn't go in. Well, that's respectable from Painter, and of course, that's uh, normal from Taylor these days. Uh, 107, 100, anything 105 and over seems pretty normal. At one time, we used to scream when he got 96. over 103. Which he did, of course, from time to time. He did 113 once here back in 97, I think it was. You don't see that very often, do you? Phil Taylor leaving a bogey. He, kn he, he knows he's got plenty in time, plenty in space, but uh, Painter has left himself a finish. 117. May look at treble 18 here. 98. Well, Taylor left himself 166. What can Painter do here? This would be fantastic if he could do it. Uh, it would give him a lift to give the game a lift. It, it, it really would make Taylor think as well. Uh, so Taylor, you could you never say he's under pressure, but he can't afford to miss this 68. Chances are he won't. Double four. Double two. Now there's a chance he might. <laughs> but it's a long shot. Ruthless. Seventh leg, Kevin to Ruthless. Describes it. You could see from Kevin Painter's reaction, not again, he was saying, just give me a chance. Five out of eight on the doubles, Taylor. Painter, one out of two. He's had two darts and a double in six legs of darts. That's how dominant Phil Taylor's been thus far. Well, that's a good start. That's a seventh 140 already for Painter, you know. And uh, Taylor's hit three of them. He's at two 180s, I know. 135. Well, the fourth time they played at Blackpool, three previous occasions, all in the second round, Taylor winning them all. 13-3 last year, and a couple of 13-6s, 2007 and 2002, and we'll be looking for another convincing victory here. 140. Some great names of Grace's Arena in different facets of life. Entertainment, politics, sport. 100! And certainly in sport, this man you're watching now is the predominant one, no doubt about it. In incredible to think, he's 50 99. next month. Three weeks' time! He's getting better, he's Three. getting better. 50 years of age, and, you know, there's been two or three occasions over the last decade that we thought his, his star may be on the way, that, that, that Taylor's days at the top were numbered, how wrong we all were. And we all thought that, he's, he's had a couple of wobbles. But uh, the thing is, Stuart, that each time he seems to have come back stronger. Yeah. 59. Uh, and, and that's what's frustrating for the other Kevin players. He doesn't come back to the level that he was at before. He comes back better, stronger, more consistent. Well, he keeps One saying, hundred. every year he keeps saying Kevin five more years. 68. Won the last leg with treble 20, double four. He's going to have to settle for one dart at double 16. Perfect. Perfect. It was a brilliant marker. Used the barrel beautifully. 6 1, and it's a third break of throw. And I have to say already, after seven legs, John, that there's only one winner from here.
Yeah, there's not even deja vu about it. It's deja, 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 deja vu, 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 because it's happened so many times before. And Painter, I think, 140. he realises his fate, realised it at the outset, but he'll give it to go. He's 95.3 out, 3.8, that's what he's got to do. Try and win as many legs as possible, whether that be 3 or 13. Give it a go. Well, I, I would love to be proved wrong, but I just, I just, I just can't see Painter getting anywhere near. A third 180 from Taylor. The average is 108. The checkout is 67 percent, and no one, no one could live with this. Uh, he, he's just in phenomenal 100. form yet again. I mean, th the numbers are stacking up for Taylor. It is another super show. From Philip Taylor. Yeah, once again, Blackpool rocks to the tune of Taylor's Dunstan. It's wonderful to behold. And all credit to Painter, that's his ninth 140. You know, he's playing on his own, isn't he? They're playing two different games. Taylor's playing his and Painter's playing his. And it's almost as if they're both playing against the board at their relative standards. Kevin, you well, require 121. Two rare misses for Taylor. Needs the treble 17 to leave himself a shot. Well, the one leg he's won, he took out the ball. 97. Uh, Failure required. I'd be 32. surprised if he gets another chance here for 7 1. Lame at the barrel. 7 1 it is. Phil Taylor. That's right, he's not missing a thing, and when he does, he's using the uh, dart intelligently. He did aim just inside that dart, perfect weight, 105 and a half his average. Painter's got up to 97.57, but of course he's not getting a shot at a double. No, and, and it must be demoralising here for Kevin Painter. 100! You know, he, he will know that there's, there's, you know, there's not a lot he can... Even if he ups his game seven or eight points from a 97 average, Taylor 60. will do the same. Um, all very frustrating and annoying for Kevin Painter. Painter, by the way, John, is 19th TV major quarter-final. He's won only five of them to date. 100! He's not yes. going to improve that record tonight. Presumably that includes his entire career. Yep. Uh, with the first... video, I've seen one or two of them at Frimley Green. Yep. And, his uh, first one was, was back in 2000 at the Lakeside. Yes. Lost, to, lost to Ted Hankey, but uh, his quarter-final record isn't good. He's lost quite a few quarter-finals to the man who's throwing now. 140! To leave himself on 161. It's a power procession at the match play. It looks 100. like it's going to be Barney against Wade, Taylor against Whitlock. Wow, what a semi-final lineup on Saturday here in Blackpool. What a semi-final lineup 65. for the first time that we'll ever witness darts in 3D. Yeah, that's something to look forward to with those four players. And uh, we're not jumping to conclusions, folks. There's no way back for Painter here. He's throwing 65. his best game in terms of his average of the uh, tournament. But it just isn't good enough to live with Taylor on 105. Now then, double eight for 8-1. No yes, problem. You're watching once Taylor. again a master at work. Even Frank Sidebottom has to jump with joy at the side. Game on. At the sight of the power. Did Painter just say boring then? Is that what we just saw Painter say? I think it's frustrating. 105 average. And, well, it is. It, it is a procession. And he, he, he has just got to believe that he can win. Four or five more legs, he can play for pride, he can show everybody here what he's capable of. We all know what, what 
Pater can do, but he, he just isn't be given a sniff, is he? 2 1, and we've seen Taylor read off six legs, John, in the blink of an eye. 60. Well, Taylor only 60. Here to 45 against Alan Warren, and I remember saying the oh, last time he did 40. that, Blackpool Rock was a fishing hazard. It was in the paper the next day. <laughs> well, 60. He well, doesn't hit 45. When he hits a 60, he usually hits back with something much bigger. 99. Eight one. Fifty-five. Is it going to become nine one? Yeah, I'm, Eric Bristow is spotting for us, and he just said that Taylor breaks his opponent's hearts, and we just sort of see the shake of the head there uh, from Kevin Painter in the background. And, One hundred and forty. Is absolutely right. Well, we've seen him demoralise Barney. Yeah. We've seen we've seen him demoralise a few pay, uh, players over the years, and particularly Painter, but simply because they have met so many times. But uh, you know, Painter. He's going to try and make sure his average yeah. is respectable and that he walks off the stage with his head held high. Breaks hearts, breaks spirits, breaks men. Double 16. Games on the 9 1. The procession continues. There is nothing, nothing that Kevin Painter can do about this. Ruthless. Sums up Phil Taylor's performance. 16 needed for a place in the semi finals. And Taylor already leads 9 1. Sky.com forward slash 3D Popes. Well, it's looking as though the top three seeds are all heading towards the semis. Uh, Barney, seeded two, is there. He'll play James Wade in the semi after that 16 12 victory over his compatriot and uh, Phil Taylor, the number one seed. It looks as though he's heading uh, for the semi against Simon Whitlock, seeded 12, but reckoned to be a much, much better player than that might suggest, beating Kevin Taylor just by a whisker and a whisker and a whisker more. 9-1 Taylor. Needs just seven more to complete that semi-final lineup. Whitlock already up to seven in the world because of his exploits here this week. If he wins the tournament, He's in the top four. Well, I don't think anybody would argue with that, would they? Now, he, 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 for me at the moment, Whitlock is the second Game best player in the world. Said that the other day. Uh, yeah, said that in a high street book is that I do the tipping for. And, uh, wow. and Taylor knows now what it's like to be on the receiving end of a 180 for once. What a start from Peter. Something to shout about but but isn't this just Phil Taylor a right smile on the face of Kevin Painter but fair play to Painter he'll want to go out with a bit of pride he'll want to win half a dozen legs maybe I've got a back oh, half a dozen legs I'm sorry on the way home well two legs certainly and he can start running then. Yeah. Mm, spot on, sir. We very rarely see a power cut in TV tournaments featuring Phil Taylor. <laughs> no mention. <laughs> no mention of Wembley. <laughs> Please. No. <laughs> Good.
Good lag this though from Kevin Payne to fair play. Favourite to win a second, big favourite to win a second leg. Yeah, and he'll have a third dart at a double soon. One out of two at the moment. That was a bullseye. Won uh, the third leg of the match with a 2020 bull. 58. And Kevin maybe he can double his tally. Oh, great dart. This, you know, for an 11 bad is Painter is painting Kevin. numbers, certainly well, giving Kevin. his dad reason to smile. An 11 data from the artist. Well, that's what he can do. All day, 96. all the experts have talked about Painter having to make a good start. You heard Ron Harrington saying that before the war come and when that didn't happen the writing was on the wall for the artist but fair play great luck yeah it's his second 11 dart of the tournament he had one against mark walsh need i say taylor well i read out four in his victory over barry bates four in one match and uh, he hit one against steve beaton as well 99 thank you Five in it in the averages. Taylor 102.95 and Painter 97. 60. Yep. Painter's had three darts and a double. Taylor's had 15 and he's hit nine of them. Not bad. Not bad. More relaxed, doesn't he? Since the break, Kevin Painter. I think deciding that he should just go up there and enjoy it and see what happens. Well, an 11 data happened. Yeah, great return from the uh, break, wasn't it? Wonderful leg of darts. And uh, well, if he can come off the stage with five or six legs to his name, he'll feel better than, than he did at Bolton for sure. And on a, quite a number of other occasions too, when he's been beaten pretty soundly. 58. But, you know, over the over the years, he's suffered at the hands of Phil Taylor more than, than possibly anybody else. Well, Barney, of course, in recent years, but. Like a fool. Leave double four. And he has. Yes, I think Teddy Jenkins has a few times. I think Adrian Lewis has suffered quite yeah. a number of times against Taylor, hasn't he? Played brilliant 60. in tournaments, and then Fairly even though he's thrown eight. well against Taylor, he just hasn't been able to win legs. Games That's the reason why, play. I guess, Stuart. Phil Taylor. Uh, Taylor, meticulous, magical, mesmerising. Merciless. 100. Well, I wonder if Simon Whitlock is watching this. I'm sure that Whitlock expected that he was going to play Phil Taylor in the semi finals, but not a lot bothers Simon Whitlock. Oh, I think he relishes the challenge. I think he really does. And I, I, I think no matter how many times you knock what Simon Whitlock down, he'll get up and, and come back for more. Uh, I think he's a great character. We know he's a wonderful dart player. 90. But he knows he's got to raise his game to its above, beyond his best to beat Taylor. But he has threatened, hasn't he, on a number of occasions in the short time he's been with the BDC to do just that. Well, he, he came over for the same reason as Barney, to challenge the best, to challenge Taylor. You know? That world final, 7-3, that flattered Taylor. 91. Yes, it did. It, it, uh, yes, I agree. The best man won, but it was closer than the scoreline suggests. Yes, if you, if you look at the legs in that match, you'll find that it was a much closer game than 7-3, than as you say. 140. Is it going to be another leg? Another break of throw. 1-2-1 one, one would give him another 12 darter here. Good darts from Kevin Painter. Fairly require 121. Trouble 17. Now the ball with Painter on 95. He'll go for it. 
96. Ah, oh, now Painter will go bull, work, bull route, 95. he thinks. So, 25 will give him 70. Now, there's the 25. So, treble 20 for double five. Bull, you see, now still is there. Back in each way. 70. Almost got it. Would have been good. 25. Yep. What is first leg on the ball? A 90 finish. Double eight. For 11. Two. Nine score. Well, a rare miss there from Taylor. And uh, the man is human. And Painter for 10-3. Two darts at double eight. He's polished this off a few times en route to this quarter final. And double four a must. Well, that's what you can't afford to do. He knows it. And he knows it as well. Surely he won't miss again. 11 2 it is. He needs five more. To claim the final semi final spot. What a lineup it is going to be on Saturday. Raymond van Barneveld against James Wade. Simon Whitlock against Philip Taylor. Yeah. Painter, what he's hit is history. And what he's missed remains a mystery. But 94.16 is average, respectable. Taylor down to 101.25 now. And really, it's not about averages in the sense that Taylor is coasting here in Blackpool. And if you can't coast in Blackpool, what can you do? 40. Yes, 11 2. Oh, well oh, done. No. Well done. Kevin Painter, a second maximum for him. But just uh, as Taylor looks. To reply, I think that's just in the single. It is. 140. Yes, he deserves 179 for that, I reckon. <laughs> but he's not going to get it. He's on 139 now, and for 12-2, capable of moving one leg closer. Not with this visit, though. 59 left. Tops when he goes. Painter can do nothing about it. One hundred and thirty-one. Well, we talk about cruise 31, control, and that's 40. exactly what Taylor's in. He's been in cruise control right from the outset. And, and uh, when you're in cruise control, playing, playing the board, playing these, and uh, it's nothing more than a handy workout for the power. Yeah. 83. Interesting, we were talking about Barneveld against Wade, and Barney in his interview with Dave Clark, bring it on, he was saying, you really laid down the 99. challenge. Uh, I'm ready for him, was Barney's phrase. Uh, I'm told James Wade was watching. Oh, good. Well, he Barney heard probably that. knew that. <laughs> he, yeah, 60. he heard that, and... It could be an absolute classic. I think James Wade is ready for Raymond van Barneveld as well. I reckon so. 99. Yes, I think Jason Tain, who might have been watching with James Wade, will have had something to say as well, <laughs> knowing him as we do. Yeah. Big backer, isn't he, of James Wade? Oh, yeah. Jason Tain uh, to start James Wade off all those years ago, seven or eight years ago, and one of the best in the business now. Good darting partnership. Wade against Barney, Whitlock against Taylor oh, will be at a semi-final lineup on Sky HD and on Sky 3D on Saturday. Well, Painter's kept going, you know. He's kept going, 135. Uh, if you... Compare the stats, and uh, if we look, at, the averages obviously tell you that Taylor's winning by some way. There you five. have it. Now, what I what I know we can see in a moment is the tons, the 140s, and the 180s. Uh, that 
that tells us a little story actually that Painter actually seven. when you look at that Fairly required Painter compared with Taylor he's not been grossly outplayed judging by that table but we know that uh, that score tells us tells us all don't, don't we 82. well he was a long way away from that uh, Kevin double Kevin 19 66 so Painter to win a third leg well he went for the ball didn't he Going to get one dart at double 16 instead. Uh, what a pity. He was going for bull double eight, wasn't he? Fairly requires 16. Um, so Taylor, double eight for 13 2. Yes, 13 2 it is, and another break. Three more Taylor needs for a place in the semi. There's no doubt that he'll get them because Painter's got to get 14. It's Taylor leading 13-2. See you soon. Quarter-final night at the World Match Play. Barney at the fourth attempt here at the Winter Gardens. Finally, in a semi-final, it's Barney against Wade. It's Whitlock, and it's going to be Taylor. He needs three more for a place in the semi-finals of the 2010 World Match Play. Another masterclass, you have to say, from Taylor. 102, just a little under his average, and you just feel... That there is plenty, plenty left in the tank if he needs it. That's right, a case, a case of job done, really. And um, continuing now, T uh, T Painter, of course, started the last session with a 180, did an 11 darter, didn't throw badly in the session. He's not thrown badly in any of the sessions. Scored pretty well, got to say. But he's playing a man who you really do have to. Produce more than just your best. I think Painter got to be averaging 98, 99, 100 himself to be testing the power in all seriousness. Easy. And he's never quite looked like doing that. That was uh, out of the board and uh, Taylor unperturbed. Might have felt different about it if it had been 13-12. Uh, Sixty. <laughs> Think he would. Yeah, three more for Phil Taylor. Fantastic four of them now for Phil Taylor. Looks like being another leg in the bag very, very soon. He likes the, the treble 19 route. Double 16 for another ton plus finish. And Game another 12 data. Another Kevin. example of mastery. A power play rolled into one. 100. Yep. Respectable painter. I've got to say, against most others in this field, 94.76 would be enough to take 44. it or the distance, maybe even win. Oh, well, he's going to lose, he's going to lose heavily here, Kevin Painter, but he looks for another maximum. Yeah, yeah well done. Three for him now. Well, he's having a bit of fun now. I think Kevin Painter, yeah, enjoying it as much as he possibly can, but he has made his mark on this world match play, Kevin Painter. 
Uh, featuring in one, or arguably the greatest comeback that we've seen when he came back from 8-2 down to beat Lloyd. Not a lot in it, is there? Uh, it's incredible, the scoring. really. It's a, it's a strange game in that regard. Clearly, Taylor has been the better player. No question about it. That's reflected in the leg score. But all of the stats uh, suggest, other than the, other than the three dart average, suggest that it's a very even contest. Kevin, you require 161. And, and, and Painter, 95, not to be sneezed at. And still putting two trebles in out of three. Done that so, so many times. For a third leg. 100. Can you require Inching towards respectability. I reckon if he gets five or six, Eight that's good dart. 17th. A 13 dart from man. Painter. And his average goes up to nearly 96. Good finish. Clean. Direct. And that three goes in with a glint and a glimmer. Well, with all due respect to Kevin, I tip Taylor uh, 16-5. 57. And, well, Painter can perhaps give us that score with some inspired throwing, but this is what he's up against. We keep saying it, and that... It was not a good start from Taylor because I reckon eight times out of ten that third one would nestle in just over the other two that were already there. 30. And the buzz around the arena here at the Winter Gardens. And Taylor. 137. Getting ever closer to the finishing line. He had another world match play semi-final. Last one he lost to Terry Jenkins. If you remember, and Wade went on to beat Jenkins in the final. Yeah. Three years ago. Forty-eight. 48 leaves 119, but uh, on this occasion, no real threat from Painter. 140. Well, playing the board, hitting Taylor the scores, keeping his average up. And in a way, Stuart, they have almost played two different games. Play, Painter's played his, Taylor's played his. It's almost as if they've been, both been playing the board. And here we go for double top. Yeah, for 15-3, a 1-1-9 finish, and one away. A walk in the park, in Stanley Park, across the way, near the zoo, for Taylor. 85. I wouldn't say that uh, Peter's well, he has, he, been stranded on the rocks. No, he, well, he hasn't done too bad, has he? A 95 average is... Is winning probably 75% of your games, but he's had very, very few chances at the end of the legs. He's been so dominant. Is he going to go out in style? 140. Gives him a chance of winning a fourth leg. Yes. Six for Taylor, not enough, 30 behind. And a lovely first dart. Fancy another one yet. 140. Yeah. So, could be 15 4 soon, and the start of a remarkable historic recovery. And uh, you might smile at that, Stuart Pike. <laughs> you should have seen Stuart Pike's face, folks, when I said that. <laughs> well, he did come back for an egg two against Colin Lloyd. 
merely setting the scene for a possibility, that's all. <laughs> 100. Yeah, good darts. The 12th round, he's on a 13 darter again. You could have, you know, you sometimes say when players take on Taylor that when they suffer defeat like this, they put it down to experience, but Painter's experienced it so many times. For a full flag, double 18. Well done, Kevin Painter. 15 4 it is, and he's reached his first ever quarter final at Blackpool. Painter has. He's featured in one of the great comebacks in match play history and he'll pocket £15,000 as well. Not bad for a few days' work. Oh, and uh, some great memories to take away. Well, a power pack performance again, and he may not be done with in terms of the 180s, although that's in treble 5, 135. 135. Uh, probably only one more chance to get a 180, Phil Taylor. So be prepared, folks, for three in the red pit. 100. <laughs> uh, it's, you, you, you really do feel as though it's going to be, well, not now. Let's be realistic. Well, it, for Phil Taylor, it's job well oh, done. It's, a, it's an hour in the office. It's a productive hour. And he moves on to tomorrow, to Saturday, to a semi-final against Simon Whitlock. Well, oh, parity on the 180s, four apiece now. Well, the worst Every time for another 180. Yes, Kevin. Every right to be delighted on that occasion as you've hung on in there in terms of 60. pride and performance and uh, one two one finish now would rock the, the, the oh come on bullseye for 15 five <laughs> oh, i thought he was gonna go for it well he did didn't he 32. So, for the match, for another semi-final, he needs double 16. Yes, Never going to miss another terrific Taylor Peter. performance acknowledged by Kevin Painter, an average of 103, and Phil Taylor continues his march to what he hopes will be an 11th World Match Play title. Taylor will take on Whitlock in the semi-finals. Taylor has beaten Painter 16-4 here in Blackpool. Sky.com forward slash 3D Pubs. It's going to look amazing, isn't it? This venue, 3D, down your, uh, your local boozer. What a day we've had at the darts. Quarterfinal results for you there. James Wade through. Best performance from him of the tournament so far. 16 12 over Wayne Jones. Simon Whitlock, 16 8 over Yellow Class. Now, some uh, big checkouts on his way there. Kostompi put on a brave battle against his fellow Dutchman, Raymond van Barneveld. Barney through, though, 16-12. And confirmation, Phil Taylor, 103 average, checkouts of 119, 106 and 101 on the way to that 16-4 victory. So the semi-final lineup. 
James Way takes on Raymond Van Barneveld. And it's Simon Whitlock against Phil Taylor, top four players in world darts, in a shootout to decide who makes it through to Sunday's final. Also, after the semi-finals, women's darts on Sky Sports. The 2010 PDC Unicorn Women's World Championship. It's USA against England. Stacey Bromberg against England's Trisha Wright in the best of 11 legs. Phil Taylor, the man of the moment, though, on course for an 11th match play title. Very, very comfortable. A 16-4 winner, and he is through to the semi-finals of the match play yet again. Congratulations. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, um, Steve. It looked, it looked very comfortable. It didn't really push you, did it? Um, it, it, was, it was a strange game against Kevin again. I mean, it, it, we, the sky balled up all the old, you know, the final win in 2004, which was, it was, was one of the best finals I think I've ever played in. But he doesn't seem to be performing like that tonight, you know what I mean? It's, it's difficult sometimes for him. It just... I don't know, he, his trebles were not going in as what they called, then he seemed to drop his head and then he lifted himself up a little bit. When he beat Lloydie the other night, he, he come back upstairs, he went, Phil, I'll never give in. And that was what was in my mind when I was playing him tonight, even though I was 15-4 up, I'm thinking, he ain't going to give in here, <laughs> you know, you've got to... And that's the thing with Kevin, you've actually got to go out and you've got to beat him. You is really it, is it strange when you look at old footage like that and, and see yourself back in 2004 and see yourself now, you, you look better now than you did then? Better shape, fitter. No, well, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's yeah, a compliment, I, mean, I, you know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I'm nearly four. I'm nearly fifty. You know, better when I was. Yeah, um, it's. Oh, can I say? I'll keep, I'll keep trying. I keep doing different things. We were talking when we were in the theatre yeah. the other day. You know, you know me. I keep trying different things, and and everything I keep doing seems to work for me. You know, I keep trying. You know, experimenting different diets, different ways of practicing, and it seems to be working for me. Um, why I don't know. Um, it's so just, you're, 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 I think he oh, just gives me a little bit of confidence. I think. Are you a much better player now than you, you were back I'm then? I'm more experienced. I'm more experienced under pressure. Against Kevin tonight, I felt a little bit under pressure, but I'm experienced with it. You know, it doesn't make any difference to me anymore what they hit. I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying my career. I go out there each week and week in, week out, and I'm, I'm earning a fantastic living. You know, and, and God, God bless Barry Ian and Sky Sports. But that's what I do. You know, I go out and I'm. I'm, I'm I'm good at what I do. That's that's one secret, really. I'm good at what I do, and I enjoy it. That's another one. I do I do play a lot of players. I saw Kevin tonight. wasn't enjoying himself. Mm. But you really you've got to go out there. You know, he, he scraped past Lloydy. Should have got a beat first round, really. Mm. Second round he played really really well, and then he's got me in the third round. But really and truly, you know, he's on a great payday, and a lot of players what go out here have so. You know, down in the cells and miserable, but they shouldn't be really. You know, you're in a you're in a position you're in the top 32, where everybody in the world would pay you to be where you're standing. If you know what I mean. Um, talking about top players, you look at the semi-final lineup. You've, you've got four. the four the yeah, four well, best we players in the world. To be there. We've been the most consistent players over the last few years. Simon Whitlock's done fantastic. Barn, he's done brilliant. You know, little breaks done him good. I had a chat with him earlier on. James Wade, James Wade, do you know what I mean? I think James is in Barney's match tomorrow is going to be a cracker, and I think you're going to see a cracker with me and, with me and Simon. I think you're going to see two cracking semi-finals tomorrow, and we deserve to be there. You know, Nobody can say them four people don't deserve to be there. When, we, we, when we were chatting the other day, you, you mentioned Wade and Whitlock, is it the, the guys you see as your, your biggest rivals, and on, on the current form... Barney as well, you know, Barney, Mervyn King, you know, they're all capable of doing what they can do, you know. Hey, Adrian disappoints me in a lot of ways because he's very, very capable of you know, being the, one of the best players in the world, but he just isn't producing what he can do. There's loads of players. I mean, <laughs> Colin Osborne, Andy Hamilton, you know, I keep saying these players week in and week out. Michael Van Gerwen, about four or five years ago, would believe me, was untouchable. I had 107 average once and he beat me 3-0. He's a cracking little player, but he's not, they're not doing what they're doing, you know. All of a sudden, they're they, they putting themselves under pressure. Because I don't think they've gone. I think they've gone too serious. Mm. To uh, because the money's so fantastic, you know, you can make yourself a multi-millionaire now. Mm. And so the, the people are not enjoying the game as much as what they should be doing. And that's why Barney, I think, took the took the gamble of saying, right, I'm going to have a couple months off. I'm going to watch the football. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to eat healthy. Whatever else it does, I don't know. And he's going to come back with a bang. He's in the semi-final. Rod Harrington came up with a nice uh, expression. Said that uh, Simon Whitlock respects you. 
he, he doesn't fear you. I think Simon does fear me a little bit. Of course he does. Everybody fears me. I mean, I wouldn't like playing me at the, you know, if I'm getting out there and doing 115 averages. I think Simon enjoys playing me. It's the one thing, you know, he always says to me, I do enjoy playing you. Whether he fears me or not, I don't know. You know, it, it's up to him. But tomorrow you're going to see a cracking semi final. Well, a lot of things that Rod says is, is spot on, to be honest with you. He is, he is very, very knowledgeable. So is Eric. I think Eric and Rod together. Brilliant, you know, because you'll always get Eric will be the opposite to Rod. You don't always agree with him, but I love that with Sky. Um, but who knows? Who knows tomorrow? You know, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Simon isn't, you know, the best of health at the minute, so that might even help him a little bit because he won't be so much worried to think about his health. What about the other semi, Wade and, and Barney? Tough um, very, Barney, very Barney tough was pointing at the camera, going, "James, I'm ready for you. I'm ready for he you." He is ready for him. He's ready for him up there. That's that's the difference. You know, Eric used to say to me when I first started, Phil. Get that ready. Get that ready, and everything else will come with it, you know. And that's the one thing Barney is now. He's mentally right. Uh, it's up to James now to, to knock it out of him again, you know, knock him down. If he gets if he gets slaughtered tomorrow, Barney's confidence will be back in the dustbin. If he wins, his confidence will be, you know, he'll be on top of the... the uh, that's what Sky should do. He should interview him on top of the Big Dipper, because <laughs> that's where he'll be. Um, 3D darts for the first time. Unbelievable. You've, see, you've seen the screens behind us. I've 3D glasses on. Did you see them earlier on? Yeah, <laughs> they look, yeah, it's state of the art ones. It's unbelievable. I, I, I cannot think, you know, in my lifetime, I mean, I started with the black and white TV when Mum and Dad did, and all of a sudden we come to HD, now 3D, and, and, and what's going to happen in the next 12 months? Who knows? Do you know what I mean? It, 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 the technology is travelling so fast, so quickly. You know, after sport, after sport, about 10 grams worth of televisions are no good anymore. <laughs> so, uh, stop you can it. afford a new one. Yeah, 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 can, yeah, yeah. Um, What about a, a 3D nine data? Can we book one of those in from you, please? I th well, you've got two games tomorrow where I think you could see multiple nine darters tomorrow. If anybody's a betting man, I'd have a little bet on multiple nine darters. I really would because I think you're going to have the best semi-final. Well, the best semi-final lineup. I think you've had for a few years. Phil, congratulations. Even I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you. At my uh, age. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Phil Taylor, through to the semi-finals of the match play.